All right there, everyone. Italy's one and only Matteo Salvini has officially shut down what was once the largest migrant center in all of Europe. That is what we'll be talking about. On today's video, we'll also be looking at the astonishing rise of Salvini and why he's become such a political superstar. But first, many of you have been kind enough to ask whether we've been demonetized by Google and YouTube, and the short answer is yes. Uh, not to the extent of someone like a Steven Crowder, but yes, due to the sometimes, shall we say, controversial nature of the subjects that we deal with here on this channel, ad revenue is in fact periodically curtailed. And I wanted to make sure that you knew that we have a number of different tiers that you can subscribe to in order to help this channel for as low as just $1 a month. If you click on either the Patreon or Subscribe Star links below, you'll find a number of tiers that offer some really great monthly rewards to you all the while you ensure that we can keep bringing you these videos each and every single day. So if you would, please click on either the Patreon or subscribe star links below. See how you can support us for as little as a dollar a month. Literally every dollar counts here. And we can't thank you enough for your support. Well, the one, the only Matteo Savini has done it again. The Deputy Prime Minister of Italy has officially closed what was until just a few days ago the single largest migrant center in all of Europe. The Mineo Center, which is located in the island of Sicily, it was once a United States military base, it became a major, indeed the major holding facility for migrants entering into Europe. At its peak, it was housing more than 4,000 migrants. Well, as of just the other day, the center has been officially shut down. It is no longer going to be in use, and this is because of the astonishing success that Matteo Savini has had in closing the borders of Italy. Italy, of course, being the main entry for migrants crossing the Mediterranean from northern Africa into Europe. The results speak for themselves. Uh, we have to remember that before Salvini came into power, Italy was literally being overrun by migrants. I mean, the figures are just astonishing. Back in 2014, okay, this is even preceding the migrant crisis in 015. Back in 2014, there was a huge jump in the number of people entering Italy from Northern Africa, okay? I don't know how many of you know this. The, the, the figures are astonishing. But the migrant total entering into Italy went from 42,000 in 2013, which was still stunning, to an astonishing 170,000 in 014. It quadrupled in a single year, and it didn't stop. Migration reached a zenith in 180,000 migrants in 016. And it wasn't just the whole issue of people flooding into the country, it was also just the terrible tragedy of 5,000 people drowning in their attempts to make the crossing. That's how many died in 016 in just one year. So Salvini campaigned off of the insanity of all this, all right? And he said, look, if you elect me and my party, Lega, the League, uh, we will stop this once and for all. Uh, and so the Italians did. They voted Lega party in droves, who in turn formed a coalition government with the populist Five Stars back in uh, March 4th of 018. And Salvini became deputy prime minister as well as the minister of the interior, which means that he oversaw migration and border enforcement. And do you know what he did? Okay, this is Salvini. You ready for this? In a single year, literally in a matter of months, Salvini reduced the amount of migrants entering into Italy from a high of 181,000 to a mere 3,000 so far this year. They've gone from 180,000 to 3,000 in just a matter of months under Matteo Salvini. And as part of that achievement, Salvini live-streamed his visit to the Mineo Migrant Center. That's now empty. So he live-streams his walk around this tour of this facility to show the fruits of his border security enforcement. By the way, this live-streaming that Salvini does, this is all part of why he's so popular, okay? Italian politicians have tended to be aloof, very separated from the people. Salvini's the complete opposite. He's an amazing politician. He's been called, for example, the king of Facebook, okay? So if Trump is the king of Twitter, Salvini is the king of Facebook. Uh, one estimate had him posting about 10 times a day. So keep in mind, your average Italian politician maybe posts maybe 
a few times a week, okay? Salvini posts more in one day than his political opponents do all week. He has nearly 4 million likes on his Facebook page. And it all plays into the fact that he is very, very approachable and personally delightful. You see him shaking hands and taking selfies with these massive crowds that form all around. I saw it myself in Verona, which is the heart of Lega country. He was, a, he was treated like a rock star. So Salvini has achieved this perfect persona of being a very real tough guy, but with a heart. Right? He'll shut down migrant facilities and turn away migrant ships that want to dock at Italian ports. He'll be immovable on that. And then he'll turn around and start smiling and joking and hanging out with people on the streets in Italy. And he looks like just this humble guy, just wants to be your buddy. That's the sort of genius of Salvini. But what's really genius is his political sense. We have to remember that Salvini has taken a political party that up to just a few years ago was on the brink. I mean, it really looked like Lega was going to collapse, both politically and financially. When Salvini took over the party, it was barely, and this is just a few years back, it was barely getting 4% in the polls. In a matter of five years, Lega went with from 4% support to an astonishing 34% in the last European parliamentary election several weeks back. Polls shown that they've gone up even more since then. We talked about this last week, right, when the Dutch flagship called Sea Watch, carrying 42 refugees and migrants rescued off the coast of Libya, when the captain defied a ban from entering into Italian waters and eventually forced the boat uh, to dock at an Italian port, the captain was arrested, the refugees were dispersed to other countries, and the NGO behind the boat was levied a maximum fine. And that brought condemnation all over Europe, particularly Brussels. But not in Italy. <laughs> the polls for Salvini's party, the Italian League, they went up during this whole like two-week ordeal from 34% to 37%. Remember, in Italy, you only need 40% to have a governing majority in the Italian parliament. And according to analysts from a uh, market research agency, Lega could easily exceed 40% support in the next couple of months. Salvini himself has a 60% approval rating, which again, I got to see firsthand in Verona, Italy. When he arrived to speak at the venue where we're having the World Congress of Families, gang, he was a flipping rock star. I mean, he, when the, the car pulled up, the crowd that formed around it, the pandemonium, when he came out, and again, he was high-fiving and shaking hands. I've never, I've never seen anything like it. And there's a clear reason for this. Salvini recognized the politics of the future, which is what scholars are calling post-security politics. We talk about this a lot on this channel, post-security politics. Post-security politics is the increasingly popular response to the multiple contradictions inherent in globalization, the very globalization that's being so faithfully advocated by the elites in the EU and the Washington, D.C. swamp. Globalism entails a number of dynamics that provoke significant insecurities and anxieties among populations that globalism itself is powerless to resolve. And these anxieties, as you all know, those of you who are regular to these channels, is threefold. Border insecurity, economic insecurity, and cultural insecurity. Border insecurity is provoked by globalization's transnational dynamics that encourage mass immigration on the one hand, and transnational corporations that have no loyalty to land or culture or ethnicity on the other. Economic insecurities are provoked by what's called a global division of labor, where industrial and manufacturing jobs are relocating to third world nations, all the while capital and finance coalesce around the financial centers of urban areas, which in turn then leaves rural populations out of the loop, as it were. Rural populations are experiencing mass unemployment in globalist economies. And cultural insecurities are felt by an overwhelming sense of an immigration invasion, where the cultures, customs, and traditions of a population are expected by the elites in Brussels to accommodate the immigrants rather than the other way around, as well as globalism's narcissistic and consumer-based values uh, replacing you know, timeless traditions and so on. And what we have to appreciate is that Matteo Savini and the League, or Lega, have built their entire political platform 
on resolving precisely these three very insecurities. Matteo Savini has not only been advocating, but actually enforcing not just border security, but actual and real immigration enforcement. Migrants arriving into Italy's borders have in fact been shipped back to the Middle East and Northern Africa. They are radically reducing the amount of migrants that have been able to come into uh, the nation. In terms of economic security, Salvini is putting forward the notion of a flat tax that would cut taxes and spur economic growth for everyone. And for cultural insecurities, Salvini has been celebrating the customary and traditional practices that comprise a unique Italian identity, along with calls for the rebirth of the Italian family and pro-life culture to reverse Italy's fertility decline. And what's been the result of all this? The result is that the nationalist populist Lega, and their coalition partners as well, by the way, the Brothers of Italy, they're enjoying a soaring popularity. They dominated. They dominated the European parliamentary elections, and it looks like they're going to dominate their next national election. So there is no question. Matteo Savini is a political genius. He took a fringe political party that was getting no more than a few percentage points of support just a few years back and literally, literally in a matter of months, turned it into one of the most successful political parties on the continent. And it's because he recognized the politics of the future. He recognized that globalist liberalism had exhausted itself. It was now inescapably in the position of constantly trying to put forward solutions to problems that it creates. Globalism is inescapably in the position of constantly trying to put forward solutions to problems that it itself creates. And so populations are looking for different kinds of solutions outside of globalist structures. And as a result, they're going back to nation, culture, custom, and tradition as the way forward for a flourishing future. And no one, no one has quite understood that like the one and the only Matteo Salvini. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out some more awesome coffee mugs and t-shirts to celebrate all things nationalist, populist, and traditionalist that you're absolutely going to love. And please click either or click on either our Patreon subscribe star PayPal links below and consider becoming a monthly or one-time supporter of this channel and help us to continue to analyze current events in light of super awesome conservative trends so that you can live in the present in light of even better things to come. God bless. <laughs>